Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the broader stock market and we're also gonna talk about Bitcoin. I'm gonna segment this video into two sections. In the first, we're gonna talk about the broader stock market and we'll talk about what exactly happened today. And then in the second portion of the video, we're gonna talk about some of the technical analysis indicators for Bitcoin. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's get straight into the video. Of course, there are gonna be some timestamps down below so you guys can forward or rewind the portion that you guys wanna see the most. First things first, today has been an absolutely horrible day for the stock market. The Dow Jones is down 461 points. The S&P is down close to 54 points, and the NASDAQ is down 283 points. Even the Russell 2K, which measures a lot of these small cap companies, that's down 2.34%. All came after we finally got confirmation that the US saw its first case of the new virus. And then things just went downwards very, very quickly. First and foremost, the CDC midday today as stocks were trading confirms the first US case of COVID variant and has been detected in California. As soon as this was posted, we saw a pretty hefty decline in a lot of the major indices. For example, the Dow Jones indice was actually up around 400 points on the day. On the Dow Jones, we were up close to 400 or 500 points on the day. We were trading at around 35,000. And as soon as this news came out, we lost close to 800 to 900 points, literally within a span of two to three hours. Look at the drop that we saw as the day progressed. And we saw the exact same thing for the NASDAQ indice too. If we go to the one day view, it's gonna look identical to the Dow Jones. We were trading at close to 15,800 and as the day progressed and once the news of the new variant really resonated with investors, we saw a pretty hefty decline, unfortunately. So not only do we have the fears of the new variant really wreaking havoc on the stock market and supply chains, but we also have the Federal Reserve really changing its perspective on its monetary policy. For a lot of you guys that have tuned into this channel, we talk very often about Jerome Powell, this gentleman right here. Once the pandemic started, they introduced an easy money policy where they basically pumped money into the stock market. A lot of that money ultimately went into assets like homes and a lot of it went into stocks. And that's why the stock market had such an incredible year. And that's why the stock market basically for the past two years has seen incredible gains. But as of recently, matter of fact, as of last week, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, is finally switching his perspective on this whole inflation thing. And they plan on accelerating the taper of their bond purchases in very simple terms. The easy money policy is slowly going to fade away. And the market did not like that. We also have the fears of interest rates going up. Now, for a lot of you that are not familiar, anytime there's a fear of interest rates going up, stocks really take a beating. A beating to the downside, not to the upside either. That's also a big reason why the past week or two have been really brutal for the stock market. And this was also confirmed to us a couple of days ago where Powell said that the Fed will discuss speeding up a bond buying taper at the December meeting. So this is within the next week or two. Investors are obviously on their feet. We just have so much going on in the stock market right now. It's really important for you guys to stay up to date. Let me show you the VIX indice. For a lot of you guys that are not familiar, the VIX volatility index is a measurement of volatility. It's a great way for us to gauge market sentiment. Anytime we see a spike in the VIX volatility index, peak fear means peak sell-off. What I need you to pay attention to is right now the VIX indice is at around 31. Historically, over the past year, that is one of the highest levels that we've seen over the past year or two. The only time that we saw a greater spike was actually back when the pandemic first struck. The VIX indice went all the way up to around 82. We also saw a spike around June. We also saw a spike around November. And of course, we also saw a spike typically at the end of January. And that's when we all saw an aggressive sell-off in the stock market. And that's exactly what's happening now. What's really useful about the VIX indice, I know it's not the most exciting thing to talk about, but it gives us an indication that a lot of stocks are currently trading at discounts, or it possibly gives us an indication that it might be a good time to start looking at some of the companies that we are very interested in. What's really significant about a spike in the VIX indice, it is a spike, so it's only temporary. It's not something that's gonna last forever. Anytime we saw a spike in the VIX indice, we typically, a day or two after that, or a couple of days after that, see a quick retracement. We saw the exact same thing back in November. We saw the exact same thing at the end of January. We see a spike and then the VIX goes all the way down because investors are buying the dip. Take a look at the fear and greed index. Now this is a measurement of the sentiment for the stock market in general. Right now, we're at extreme fear, but the biggest thing I want you guys to pay attention to, 
Look at where we were one month ago. We were at extreme greed. Anytime we see extreme greed, it means that investors are very optimistic. There's a lot of fluff in the market. There's a lot of cash in the market and people are just being euphoric about stocks and assets. We are at extreme fear, so it indicates us the complete opposite. So once again, it reiterates the point that we have to be on our feet and it could be a good time for us to really find companies that we love and that we wanna build new positions in or even add more to our positions. And that's not financial advice, guys. Of course, I am just a bald Arab guy that's talking to you guys on YouTube. And now that we've established that the stock market is going down because of the fear of the new COVID variant, of course, we also talked about the fear of interest rates going up and the fear of inflation. Let's take a second and look at how some of our favorite stocks really performed on the day after all this news. Using Finviz, we could take a look at some of the biggest companies in the stock market and take a look at how they did. And for the most part, all you guys see on this graph is red because today was an absolute bloodshed. Matter of fact, 77.2% of stocks in the stock market today had declining momentum. On top of that, 91.9% .9 of stocks formed new lows on the day, which is really, really insane. And on top of that, 76.9% .9 of stocks are below their 50 day moving average, which once again is reiterating a ton of weakness. And when it comes to the S&P, 62% of the moves on the day were considered bearish moves and only 38% were considered to be bullish moves. For the most part, over the past couple months, it was the complete opposite where most of the momentum was to the upside, so bullish. So it's very clear to us that we've seen a shift in momentum. Now, if you go to my tradingview.com, I'm gonna show you some of the stocks that I pay attention to on a daily basis. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking too good. Facebook, for example, is down close to 4.2%. Workhorse is down 9%. Amazon is down 1.6%, Square is down 6.6%, and just look at these moves. AMC is down 15% on the day. Clover Health is down close to 10% on the day. Even Tesla. Tesla is down close to 4.5% on the day. And this just continues. A firm is down close to 8%, Roku is down close to 8%, even a company like Palantir is down close to 6%, and even Hood, Robinhood, is down close to 7.7%. Everyone is taking a beating today. I'm gonna to keep it very real with you guys. If you're new to the stock market, of course, there is a lot of learning that has to be had. Understand the importance of having cash on the sidelines. Good times are never going to last. We're always going to see a retracement on stocks at some point. The past year or two have just been absolutely insane, especially the past year. Things have been going really well for stocks and we were due for a retracement. It's always important when you're seeing your stocks constantly going up, make sure that you have cash set aside so you are prepared for the dip. Times like today and the times that we've seen over the past week or two are the best time for you guys to catapult your growth and your wealth. Buying stocks at discounts like we're seeing right now in the stock market is ultimately going to create life-changing wealth in the future. So you have to be prepared. I transferred over around $131,000 Canadian and I do plan on buying the dip on a lot of these stocks. I'm not gonna do it yet and I'll show you why, but I do plan on buying the dip. I've had cash set aside to really take advantage of days like today and this money is going to split into a retirement account and also into a regular trading account. Some of this cash is going to be put towards some of the longer term positions that I have and the rest of it is going to be put towards newer companies that I believe are soon going to be trading at a discount. Let's switch over to the charts very quickly and I want to show you guys the area that I am paying attention to personally when it comes to buying the dip. The ticker that I'm showing you here is called the IXC and this ticker tracks the NASDAQ indice, okay? So it tracks the NASDAQ Companies that are involved in growth, innovation, and in technology are involved in the NASDAQ indice. Now for me, like you guys are seeing a couple of lines and I'm sure that a lot of this may not make a lot of sense to you, but let me show you exactly why I haven't started buying the dip, not yet, but soon, I will be very soon. There are two lines on the chart that I want you guys to pay attention to. We have the line in green, which is the 50 day moving average. And then we have the line in red, which is a 200 day moving average. Of course, the bars that you see here on the top are the price movements for this index. The biggest thing I want you guys to pay attention to is the line in red. Notice how the price action of this indice, as soon as it touches the red line, sees a substantial bounce. If we go all the way back to October 28th, of 2020 right here. We saw the indice touch this line in red and then we saw a pretty significant bounce off of that. We also saw the exact same thing right here, which happened to be around March the 4th of this year. We saw it for a third time around this area right here, around March the 29th. We also saw it for a fourth or fifth time, you could say, around the May 10th to the May 14th area as well. 
Even though we dipped below it slightly, we eventually bounced off of this level once again. And then of course we saw it for a fifth and sixth time around this area. This was around the October timeframe. It is very obvious that the 200 day moving average for this indice is a strong area of support. And what do we know about areas of support? It's very likely for us to see a bounce off of an area of support. And it's been confirmed to us more than six or seven times. So this area is a valid area to pay attention to. Now, keep in mind, I'm looking at the one year view and I'm also looking at the four hour bar. So we click right here and we click on the four hour bar. For me, we're getting really close to this line in red, which again is a very valid area of support. So this is actually where I'm going to start buying a lot of the stocks that I want to, even if we don't approach it exactly, if we get even close to it, I'm gonna start buying heavily because historically it's been proved to us to be a very strong area of support. And what's really interesting to us is we've seen this play out multiple times, even over the past year or two. Let's go back to October the 8th. We saw a high in the stock market on the indice at that time frame. We saw a decline of around 10%. We touched the line in red and then we bounced upwards. Then we approached all time highs once again. We did it a second time around February the 16th. We also hit an all time high. Then we retraced around 11%. We touched the line in red and then we bounced off of it. Again, it did it for a second time, literally. It did it for a third time, literally a couple weeks after that. And take a look at September the 7th. We touched all time highs on the stock market. We retraced close to 8% and then we bounced off of this line once again. So for me, just historically speaking, we're gonna go from a high in the stock market around this area all the way down to the line in red, which is gonna be around 7%. So that is historically in line with what we've seen prior. So this is a very substantial area that I'm gonna pay attention to. And it's around the $15,000 level on the NASDAQ indice. We are trading at around 15,254. So that leaves us with around two to 3%. So that's when I'm finally going to put a lot of this cash to use. I'm gonna be patient, but I know that just based on history that this is very likely to play out. So over the next couple of days, really pay attention to this area, which again is gonna be around the $15,000 level on the NASDAQ indice. And this is more specific for anyone that's interested in growth technology and innovation stocks. It's really important not to get it twisted. The fears of the virus, the fears of inflation, of interest rates, all this is being built into the technicals right now. Pay attention to the technicals. You'd be surprised how things are gonna play out. And I'm hoping over the next couple of days, if we do touch this level, I'm gonna post another video and I'm gonna tell you guys, hey, I told you so, we knew that this was gonna happen. But we have to wait. I do hope that it does happen because I really wanna put that cash to use. Just like a lot of stocks, as soon as the news of the COVID variant was detected in the US, of course, we did see a pretty substantial sell-off from Bitcoin. We were trading at a high of around $59,000 for the day, all the way down to the current price, which was $57,000. I wanna remind you guys, now we've talked about this in a previous video. We did some technical analysis on the price of Bitcoin and we were talking about a descending line. So the line that you see right here in red on the top and the line that you see here at the bottom created a descending wedge. For us, we talked about the fact that this was a confirmed area for us to pay attention to. We knew that the line in red here at the top was a very valid area of resistance for us because it was confirmed to us right here right here, right here. And we knew that the line in red on the bottom was also a very strong area of support. Again, because it was confirmed to us right here, this area here, and it did it all the way down here too. The idea behind a descending line or a descending channel like you're seeing right here, the price is going to jump in between these lines until we see an official breakout. Now notice right here at the bottom where the line in green is. In previous videos, we talked about this line in green. I told you guys that this was a substantial area of support that we had on the Bitcoin charts. And the reason that I said it was a valid area of support was because it was confirmed to us multiple times. It was confirmed to us around this time frame right here and also did it a couple of months back right around this area here. Now there are a lot of circles on the chart but focus on the ones right here at the bottom. So this circle here, this one here, this one. These were confirmed to us as valid areas of support that we had on the chart. Since we mentioned the descending channel like I have right here on the chart, I said that the price of Bitcoin was going to jump in between these lines until we touched the $54,000 level. And ideally we wanted to see a break out of this descending channel. That's exactly what happened, which is awesome. So I'm happy that I added around this price frame. With that being said, Bitcoin has done exceptionally well, matter of fact. I know that the market has been just having a devastating time over the past couple of weeks, but Bitcoin for the most part has really held up. The fact that Bitcoin's only down 16 basis points as I'm filming this is absolutely incredible. It's being very, very resilient. If we zoom out to the one year view, 
Bitcoin is doing really, really well. And I'm really excited to see how this is gonna play out to the end of the year. Of course, there is seasonality involved with the price of Bitcoin. Typically, December is a very strong month for Bitcoin. And it's been proving to be that way. I know it's only December the 1st, so let's not get too rushed. Of course, even though the stock market had a bad day today, it doesn't mean that December necessarily has to be a bad month for everyone. Bitcoin could still do incredibly well. But again, the macro environment is important. But what I'm trying to say is be patient. You'd be surprised with how this is going to perform. And we've also done some Fibonacci analysis on the price of Ethereum. And Ethereum has really been doing exceptionally well. Let me rewind you guys a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the fact that Ethereum was in an ascending channel. So unlike the price of Bitcoin, which was in a descending channel, anytime we break out of a descending channel, that's considered to be very bullish. When it comes to Ethereum, during that time frame, I told you guys that Ethereum was trading within an ascending channel. And if we broke out of this line, we were going to see some declines. And that's exactly what happened. I told you guys about this line right here in green, which is around the $3,900 level for Ether. I mentioned that, that to us, that was going to be a very strong area of support. And the likelihood of seeing a bounce off of that level was incredibly high. And that's exactly what happened. Like it bounced off of this level perfectly. That's why technical analysis can be so useful. Even if you don't like technical analysis, everyone, especially in the crypto space, is relying on these technicals and this type of analysis. So it's something for you to at least take into consideration. Now, of course, we saw a nice bump. I told you guys that ideally we needed to break out of this area of resistance around the $4,200 level. And then ideally we were going to see consolidation within these two lines. Of course, this is going to be between the $4,200 level for Ether all the way up to around the $4,600 level. And as I'm filming this right now, it does look like Ethereum is slightly below that level. So the next couple of days are going to be interesting. If we can't hold this area, of course, I do believe that we will continue to trade within this range. But I'm hoping that Ethereum really has the energy to stay above this level. And that'll put us in a position to potentially test the $5,000 level for Ether. If we break $5,000 on Ethereum, I think we're going to see exceptional things from this crypto over the next year. It'll be awesome to see Ethereum really trade within this range. But again, we do have to be patient. The market is having somewhat of a turbulent time, but this too shall pass. Hindsight is also really, really important for us too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare a lot of the crypto miners that we talk a lot about on this channel compared to the price of Bitcoin. So you guys could see if the crypto miner is outperforming or underperforming. This is going to be on the three month view. If you guys are interested, we'll start off with the six month view. And these lines in different colors do indicate the different stocks. So for example, HUT8 over the span of the past six months has gained 187%, which is insane. The price of Marathon has gone up close to 105%. Bitfarms is also up close to 85% in average between the US ticker and the Canadian ticker. Bitcoin over the past six months is up around 53%. And it looks like Hive Blockchain, for example, is trading in tandem with the price of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is up 53% and Hive Blockchain is up 53%. So it's trading almost exactly like Bitcoin, which is really interesting. MicroStrategy is up close to 48%, which is also slightly interesting considering the fact that MicroStrategy is mainly Bitcoin. I'm actually slightly surprised to see this trading a bit less than Bitcoin. Riot is only up around 24%. Digihost is up 3%. Argo Blockchain is actually basically neutral, so unchanged compared to the price of Bitcoin. And CleanSpark is actually down close to 2% compared to Bitcoin over the six month. Let's zoom in and go to the three month view so we have a better picture. Of course, HUT8 still over the past three months is up 47%, Bitfarms is up 30%, also Marathon is up 23%, the price of Bitcoin is up close to 20% over the past three months, and Hive Blockchain is up around 14%, CleanSpark is actually outperformed, it's up around 17%, Digihost is up 10% over the past three months, and MicroStrategy, for example, is only up 0.79%. So MicroStrategy, interestingly enough, is actually underperforming the price of Bitcoin. And finally, Riot Blockchain is just not getting any love it's actually down close to 4% over the span of three months. So if you've held something like HUT8 or BitFarms, you've done exceptionally better than most of the other crypto miners. With inflation coming up, with the change in interest rates, and also with the bond tapering coming into effect, a lot of the stocks that we saw really exploding to all-time highs are not going to have the same momentum. People are going to be a lot more picky about the companies that they pick in. When we see a drop in the stock market like this, it does traumatize a lot of investors. It does scare away a lot of investors. So don't expect the same type of gains or the same type of rallies that we saw in the previous year or two. Things are going to change in my opinion, and it's not a time to be speculating or to be guessing or gambling. Be cautious with your money, be smart with your money, and take the time to figure out what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with you guys waiting on the sidelines and educating yourself. You don't have to be trading. You don't have to be buying stocks. There's nothing wrong with you doing nothing. That's the benefit that we have as individual investors and traders. 
we have the option to not do anything funny enough. If you're a hedge fund manager, if you're a hedge fund manager or a money manager, then you're basically forced to be doing trades. We don't have to do that. So it is a privilege in some odd way. I hope you guys appreciate that. Anyways, thank you so much for your continued support. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's slightly different than what I typically do, but let me know. Some feedback would be incredibly appreciated. Guys, have an awesome day. I'll see you guys in the next one.